Hello again everyone and welcome back to the Fusion Industry Association. My name is Jasmine Mund and I'm a mechanical design engineer with a key interest in the fusion industry. Today is Wednesday the 18th of September 2024 and I'm here to give you your fusion news update this week. And now on to the key headlines for today's episode. 1. The world's most powerful accelerator begins experiment for better fusion energy. 2. Chinese startup aims for nuclear fusion at half the cost of US rivals. 3. World's largest tokamak stable deuterium tritium plasmas to help reactor design. 4. Tokamak Energy launches TE Magnetics. And make sure you stay till the end because as usual I have a few interesting bonus stories that you might want to check out. 1. World's most powerful accelerator begins experiment for better fusion energy. Our first article comes from Interesting Engineering and discusses the Wendell Stein 7X, currently the world's largest accelerator and the fact that it's resumed operations at the Max Planck Institute for Plasma Physics after undergoing a series of upgrades. In February 2023, it set a record with a 480 second discharge, producing 1.3 gigajoules of energy. The new experimental phase, OP2.2, focuses on optimising performance with updated components like a gyrotron heating system that delivers over 1 megawatt into plasma via microwaves and a steady state pellet injector that shoots frozen hydrogen pellets into the plasma to maintain fusion conditions. This phase aims to increase heating power, test heat load limits on the device's carbon walls, and improve understanding of how turbulence controls plasma transport. The OP2.2 phase, running from September to December 2024, will be followed by further experiments, OP2.3 and OP2.4, through 2027. These ongoing experiments are crucial for refining plasma control and proving whether stellarators can sustain fusion energy for commercial use. The Wendelstein 7X is designed to offer advantages over tokamaks by requiring less power to sustain plasma and providing more flexibility in design. Its improvements are expected to gradually increase plasma performance, with scientists aiming to achieve long pulses at high plasma temperatures, a key challenge in the fusion industry. Ultimately, the research conducted at Wendelstein 7X is expected to contribute significantly to the goal of creating safe, clean and renewable fusion energy at a commercial scale, positioning stellarators as a possible alternative to tokamaks in the future. 2. Chinese startup aims for nuclear fusion at half the cost of US rivals. One of the stories mentioned in the last episode of Fusion News discussed China's increased funding and efforts in the fusion industry. With this story, we get a specific example of exactly that. Brought to us by the Financial Times, we have a story about China Energy Singularity, a Shanghai-based startup, and its aim to raise $500 million to develop cost-effective fusion technology. Founded in 2021, the company focuses on building small-scale tokamaks, aiming to commercialize fusion power by 2035. Inspired by work from MIT, Energy Singularity uses high temperature superconducting or HTS material to create compact efficient fusion devices. Yi Yu Ming, Energy Singularity's chief operating officer and co-founder said, our judgment was that this is more of an engineering problem rather than a scientific problem. All tokamaks are based on the same physics to realize fusion energy. But through the innovation of the HDS magnet, we can reduce the size of the machine significantly so we can reduce the cost significantly. With 95% of the materials for its first machine, the HH70, sourced locally, the company claims its costs are 50% lower than US counterparts. This is certainly a bold claim, so make sure to take it with a pinch of salt. They plan to build a larger, more powerful design, the HH170 by 2027, targeting local investors despite US-China tensions. Considering they designed, built and operated their first machine in two years, I'm intrigued to see how the company progresses in the next few years. 3. World's largest tokamak stable deuterium tritium plasmas to help reactor design. In another article brought to you from Interesting Engineering, we look at the Joint European Taurus, or JET, the world's largest and most advanced tokamak, which has achieved a significant breakthrough by stabilising deuterium tritium, or DT, plasmas a key step towards optimizing fusion technology designs. This development provides valuable insights into energy confinement and stability, revealing that DT plasmas outperform deuterium-only plasmas. The study demonstrated minimal energy losses for electrons and reduced core heat transport for ions, 
maintaining temperatures around 110 million kelvins. Researchers emphasised that the results of the study also suggest improved energy confinement in future DT plasma conditions, highlighting the potential for more efficient future designs. The experiments also showed the importance of zonal flows in mitigating turbulent energy transport. By using ion cyclotron frequency, or ICRF, heating, the researchers simulated conditions relevant to alpha particle heated plasmas, while minimising external toroidal rotation. These findings suggest that future tokamaks could be designed in a more economical and simplified manner, enhancing the feasibility of fusion as a clean energy source. However, further investigation is needed to understand plasma behaviour under high density and power conditions to fully validate these results. Jet's capacity to operate with DT fuel is critical since current tokamaks cannot completely replicate the conditions anticipated for ITER and future fusion devices. Four. Tokamak Energy launches TE Magnetics. Last but not least, news comes from the engineer. The FIA member Tokamak Energy, a UK-based fusion energy company, has launched a new division, TE Magnetics, focused on advancing high-temperature superconducting, or HDS, magnet technology. This innovation aims to enhance the efficiency of fusion devices by creating powerful magnetic fields that confine extremely hot plasma. TE Magnetics HDS magnets are designed to be ultra-high field, robust and cost-effective, addressing key challenges such as energy efficiency and the need for complex liquid helium cooling systems associated with conventional low-temperature superconductors, or LCS. With over a decade of research and more than 200 patents, Tokamak Energy is introducing its HDS technology at the Applied Superconductivity Conference in Salt Lake City. The company asserts that these compact HDS magnets operate at higher temperatures and generate stronger fields, which not only improves fusion technology, but also has potential applications in renewable energy, such as wind turbines and energy storage for grid stabilisation. Furthermore, HDS technology is expected to drive advancements in various fields, including medical diagnostics, defence and propulsion systems like magnetohydrodynamics, drives and magnetic levitation. Dr. Liam Brennan, TE Magnetics Director, emphasises, the era of high temperature superconductors is here. We're taking our knowledge, skills and talent forward to disrupt existing and create new markets for magnet technologies. And now, as promised, here are the bonuses. First up is an article for BBC News titled, Could Powerful Lasers Unlock Cheap Fusion Power? It gives a little background on the history of fusion development in the US and discusses key breakthroughs in the fusion industry, specifically related to methods involving lasers. If you're looking for an interesting overview of laser fusion techniques, definitely have a look. Next, I have a bonus from phys.org about a paper that was written a little while ago, looking into measuring the gamma ray to neutron branching ratio in the deuterium tritium reaction. This one's a little more technical, but also just as interesting. There's also a link to the paper itself on the phys.org website in case you'd like to read it in its entirety. Next up is a really interesting bonus from the FIA. Mario Draghi, former Italian Prime Minister, released a pivotal report on European competitiveness, commissioned by the European Commission. This report is aimed at addressing the EU's economic challenges and boosting its global competitiveness. A significant focus was placed on the energy sector, where Draghi calls for greater innovation and faster development of new fusion technologies, including creating a comprehensive EU strategy for fusion energy and a public-private partnership to accelerate its commercialisation. So definitely make sure to have a look into that one. The next bonus comes from the University of Wisconsin about the first plasma that was achieved in UW-Madison using their fusion device called WAM, which stands for Wisconsin HTS Axis Symmetric Mirror. It's, really, it's a really great achievement and, and worth a read if you have a few minutes. Finally, I have a fascinating bonus from Interesting Engineering about a fusion device that a teen in the UK has built whilst completing his A-levels. The 17-year-old showcased his work at the Cambridge Science Festival and noted that he actually managed to achieve plasma in June. This is genuinely such an interesting story, so definitely make sure to click the link below to find out more. And that's it for today's video. I, I hope you enjoyed. 
Uh, if you did, don't forget to drop a like, comment or subscribe. If you'd like to know more about any of the stories or bonuses mentioned today, as always, the links will be in the description below. And you can follow our uh, Fusion News Extra podcast for a more in-depth look into the topic of fusion energy. Thank you for watching. I'll see you next time.